Welcome to A Blonde and a Geek, <laughs> your podcast of all things blonde and geeky. I am the geek half of that equation. My name's Christian. To my right is the lovely Cameron. She is blonde, as you can see. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for that introduction. <laughs> and uh, uh, this week we saw a film that we will speak of in a moment, but first, uh, Cameron, that is a lovely shirt that you're wearing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I. Uh, worked on this hard uh, recently. It actually took me a lot longer to, to finish than I had hoped, but there's kind of a story behind that that I'd like to share today, um, which kind of talks to our roots to, don't untie the bow. <laughs> <laughs> it talks to our roots, and I'd like to, to go back a few months when we went to the Revision 3 launch party. At Mighty here in San Francisco. At Mighty in San Francisco, and that was, that was August, right? Something like that. that. August. <laughs> it was a while ago, um, and we had a wonderful time. It's a rockin' party. Rockin' party. It was For really, geek really cool. standards, I guess. Well, yeah, <laughs> and it was it was way more fun than I even expected it to be. So we had a great time there, and um, met a few wonderful people, uh, like Martin Sargent. Got to see Martin. Up. And um, or Martin, as I call him. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and uh, Jonathan London. Um, who's been an inspiration to us. Dancing on stage with Jonathan. Dancing on stage, the very first Geek Drone dance party. Jonathan was the man at that party. He totally He was. got it moving. So totally. We were inspired at that party, and that's what's kind of spawned a blonde and a geek. And um, when I'd, I'd watched Geek Drone before, along with a lot of the other shows. That, Dignation. Um, Dignation, we love. Control Alt Chicken, I absolutely love. Chicken! Um, <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Um, so we'd seen a lot of these shows before and thought that, that it must be very difficult to do. And it is kind of difficult to do, but it's also really fun. Um, so we started doing this and uh, watching more and more of these shows. And uh, I do have a particular fondness for Geek Drome, as you can see by what I'm wearing now. And uh, But I wanted a Geek Drome t-shirt. So I got on Jinx. It was the site that you can get them at. J-I-N-X dot com. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and notice that they only come in boy shapes, which is really upsetting to someone who has a very girl shape. So tell us about this, this girl shape that you refer to. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess guys probably don't really think about this very often, but the guy t-shirt is a big boxy kind of thing. And when a girl has... I'll just lay it out there. When a girl has boobs and hips and a small waist, a guy t-shirt fits sort of straight down and you, it just doesn't fit right. I mean, they're good for sleeping in. They're good for maybe working out in. You kind of lose those contours. You lose the, yeah, you do. So um, anyway, I, I didn't see the girl shape. Uh, I think the dig t-shirts come in the girl shape. And I got a great BitTorrent t-shirt that comes in the, in the girl shape, which I wear all the time, and I love that. So and you really gave Jonathan some shit about not having I a did. girl shape t-shirt. <laughs> no, I didn't give him some shit. I asked him. I said, so, Jonathan, what's up with not having this? And he says, well, you know, some of the girls that like Geek Trome, some of the, the eight or ten of us that there are, <laughs> just kidding, there's actually like 44 of us, I believe. Oh, um, and the special girl Geek on Drone MySpace, fan. On yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a part of now. Um, um, he said that some of the girls modify the boy T-shirts. So I said, "Well, okay, I can I can step up to that challenge." So that's what I've done, and I'm going to stand up for just a second and show you. I wanted to do something a little bit different with mine, just a little bit different. I wanted the kind of deconstructed look. I didn't want just the 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 uh, usual thing. So I made I got a medium T-shirt, which is actually a little bit too big. But I wanted to bring it in, so I gave kind of a corseted look in the front. Kind of took in the sides a little bit, put some bows on. I wanted to make it as girly looking as possible. So this is what ended up, and I, I hope you like it. It really wasn't that hard to do once I kind of got my shit together and did it. But I love it now, so it's a lot of fun. And if we ever have another geek drum dance party, which I'm hoping that we will, I'll wear it. So Jonathan, get that together for us, okay? Dude, with the cutoff top, it kind of looks like my old Van Halen t-shirt, <laughs> man. And how many boyfriend's t-shirts did I steal, you know, in high school and kind of, you know, alter and, or edit my wardrobe, as one of them actually said at one point. So 
yeah, it's, it was fun. It was fun to do it. I hadn't done a sewing project in a while. So. The Modified Geek Drone T-Shirt Project. The Modified Geek Drone T-Shirt Project. It's a mod. <laughs> Geeks are about mods. Yeah. Case mods. So yeah, it's kind of geeky. T-shirt mods. There you go. It all fits in together. Today we are we are drinking uh, beers handcrafted by uh, this trappists is serious. monks. This is serious. Chimay Grand Reserve, or something like that. <laughs> um, a, a beer with a high alcohol content and uh, a worthy head on it. <laughs> It's got a serious kick in the other parts, too. Mm. It's very sweet. It's got a sweet taste to it. I like it. It's, it um, I like beers with character, you know? Something that doesn't just, it's not just uh, run of the mirror like beer beer. Yeah, but. it's definitely different. It's good. Might make it <laughs> a little um, <clears throat> more free flowing with the colorful language. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to keep it together. So uh, this week we went to see a film that's been out for uh, what, like a week or two. Two weeks. This is we, second. We week. tried to see it last time. They were sold out, so we saw another movie, which was good. But we went to see 007 in <laughs> Casino Royale, <laughs> and uh, <What> was <laughs> so, I was like Daniel Craig as 007. <laughs> um, this was a great great Bond movie. Um, I think we've seen, I've seen almost all of them, I think. Maybe not like the Crocodiles in the Bayou one, or, you know, or the Hervé Villachez one. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. There, were, there were some real stinkers there in the 70s, but yeah. um, definitely I've seen a lot of the recent ones, the Pierce Brosnan ones. I can't say that I'm a Bond fanatic. Uh, that's more like my brother. My brother's, he knows literally like the history of every one of the films. He can tell you all about the, the controversy with Never Say Never Again, how it's not an official Bond film, but it was Sean Connery playing James Bond and it's not part mm. of the canon. There's a, there's a labyrinthine whole story about that, but um, I can't say I'm a Bond fanatic, but I have some respect for James yeah. and his yeah, efforts. Me too. I mean, you, you grow up with Bond. You've always known who James Bond is. The character, the actors have changed, but the character, you know, there's just references throughout pop culture with James Bond. So. I remember liking sure. Goldeneye a lot. Yeah. yeah. But um, there's been a real problem with James Bond movies, and it's a problem that started almost from the from the very beginning. As cool as they were, as fun as they were. Um, the Bond movies started off, I mean, the, the novels that it's based on are not silly, campy, uh, full of gadget novels. They're actually short, thrilling, kind of pulp, pulpy uh, spy fiction novels. Mm. And so they weren't meant to be all silly and um, lots of, you know, ray guns and all kinds of stuff like that. And Dr. No, the very first Bond film, played it straight. Dr. No, uh, you know, set in the, where, Jamaica, I think, and, you know, it has, uh, doesn't have the official soundtrack yet. It's got Sean Connery, he's very action-oriented. It's very much a detective kind of story where he's piecing together what's going on with this situation, and there's no, there's no campiness in it. There's no winking at the audience and the silly Q stuff and all that. So Bond's been kind of trapped in that for like 30 years. And I think a lot of, I think the people who are producing the Bond films saw how well the Bourne movies were doing and saw that they were basically, you know, doing better than Bond. In fact, when True Lies came out, that Schwarzenegger movie, people were saying, it's the best Bond film in ages, you know? <laughs> I liked that movie too, but I didn't really realize it was compared to Bond. Yeah, well, at the time. But, so, I think they decided they needed a reboot. And that's literally what this movie is. This movie pretends like none of the other Bond movies ever happened. Well, it's, it's kind the, of like it's a, the first, it's a prequel. It's a rebirth of the rebirth. franchise. It's a, it's a prequel. It's Casino Royale, the first book, and it's Bond just achieving his double O status. Well, that's what kind of confused me. I, I like the movie a lot, but it kind of, it kind of confused me because it was set in the present day, 
Not that I wanted it to be like a period piece going back to the 60s. God forbid we should do that because that could have led to the campiness and I didn't want it to be the campy thing. Um, yeah, we don't need any period pieces, especially being in the early 60s or something that would have been bad. But because they said it so solidly in the now and yet we had to remember that this was James Bond and this was so early in his career um, and early in his development and the very beginning of his character. It was weird to have that. Didn't you find that weird? I mean, the, the really modern things like the mentioning of 9-11, um, the fact that they were playing Texas Hold'em, which really plants that right now. Instead it was like watching Baccarat. Celebrity. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, want them playing to, Baccarat. I didn't want them to play Baccarat. I wanted them to play something that would be timeless. I wanted them to keep it to where you didn't have to think about what era it was, what hmm. what year it was. But with, I mean, don't you think with a spy movie it's always going to be tied to the here and now? Because with a spy movie it's all about the, the current political, uh, geopolitical state of being and, and the current conflicts going on and stuff? I, I guess so. Like but in the Cold War, it was all about the Cold War, and, and now that yeah. we're in this post-Cold um, War era, it's all about terrorism and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I suppose so, and I can see, I can see the point, but it, it was jarring for me to have the two different things, um, th knowing that it was the beginning of his career and that it was very much today. And the Texas Hold'em thing was very distracting for me. Just because it looked like Celebrity Poker Showdown or something. It makes yeah. me want to read the book and determine... We've like, the book. It's right I know. It's, it's, <laughs> I want to read it, It's sitting over on our shelf. I <laughs> bought it like good. 15 years ago and I haven't read it. But um, but I wonder what the original game that they were playing was. Oh, I read that too. I've got it in the production notes here. I forget what the name of it was. But it was something like... It might have been Baccarat, yeah. for all I know. It yeah. was something very similar to that, if it wasn't that. It was something I'd never heard of before. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's. Um, they could have played like seven card stud or so something. So for that's those of you who don't know, Casino Royale um, definitely involves uh, gambling. Yes, <laughs> as I you might have gambling. as you might expect. Um, it's a plot involving international terrorism, but also uh, the financing of the international terrorism through a high stakes gambling game. Um, just so happens, James Bond is the best gambler the best card player in the service yeah, in mi6 super smart i mean all bonds are super smart but he obviously was chosen for mi6 because he's you know right out of right out of the gate he's extra super smart and got all these talents including well, the gambling well yeah let's talk about let's talk about this bond because when you think about bond you've got <clears throat> you've got sean connery okay he's super smooth charismatic great Roger Moore, he's kind of winking at you all the time. He's got his little smirk going on. He's got his, uh, he's a little, you know, stiff newscasterly maybe. Uh, <laughs> you got Brosnan, you know, classic chiseled good looks. But they all have this, you know, suave, suave, Bond knows everything. Everything he does is pretty much perfect kind of thing going on. And this Bond, this Bond is you just get a really different feel from him. Maybe he's like the the rough edges before he turns into the suave Bond, but I almost don't him. want him to ever turn like super suave. Mm -hmm. I, I got, you know, you get sick and tired of that thing that Bond would always do. Like every every relationship Bond would have with a woman, it was always, you know, he knows just the right thing to say to make the panties fly off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, which he did in one circumstance in this movie, but he just didn't. It's in just the other. It's and all so played was, so much more really, realistic in this one. It was so much more realistic. Whereas yes. in in the other films, it's all played for camp. It's yeah. it's all a a big joke with the audience. Mm -hmm. Like he's supposed to say his little line and give you that raised eyebrow. And the audience all chuckle, chuckle, yes. Yeah. It's a joke, and then the woman is swooning. And with this one, you know, it, it's internal to the story. He's, he's, yeah. not inter he's not reacting with the audience. There's no winking back right. and forth here. This is a real secret agent uh, in real situations. And he's, 
you know, he's he's a bit of a brute, you know, but mm -hmm. his, his combat, um, you know, we his expect... first kill, I mean, how messy was that? We're used yeah. to the James Bond that just, you know, he looks at the bad guy and boom, he's dead. <laughs> he's got the gadgets to do it. But his first kill was so brutal. It so lets you know right brutal. away that you're not in normal Bond territory. Right. When Bond is like, he's got his face pressed up against the mirror of the bathroom and he's shoving the guy's head down in the water and yeah. they're grunting oh. and sweating and there's all this, you know, you know that, okay, we're, we're not in regular <laughs> Roger Moore territory right. here. Where Roger Moore is like, hi -ya! does his little karate chop and the guy and falls it, over. The, all the other Bonds just made all that stuff look so easy. And in this one, you know that he everything that he does is is hard won. And by the end of it, is this a spoiler? I don't know. <laughs> but by the end of it, he's got he's learned so much. And that's what I really liked about this movie. The plot, I had some issues with, but you know that that character has developed the hard way through this movie and by the very last frame you're in love with him and and he you're like yeah then that's james bond, bond that's is how back. he became james bond and you're like oh get it and that's why he does what he does and that's why he is who he is and, and you yeah. know he he is a brute in this one and people see him it, m even says he's a blunt instrument yeah and yet and yet he's brilliant he shows you he shows you early on that there's a lot more to him than that but he makes mistakes yeah he's he does make mistakes but he is very smart but he works for it you know it, it unlike these other bonds who just seem to just stumble into finding the answer over and over again. They show you the trail of him actually using his uh, detective skills to piece together the evidence and to do clever things here and there, you know, stuff that, that you know, by the filmmaking shows that it took effort, it took thought, you know? And so they show that, yes, he's, he is tough and strong, he's athletic, he's, he's young, he's like the youngest Bond in a long time, and he's, pretty clever too and yet he still makes mistakes and he still has to has to go back and uh, try and fix the mistakes that he makes mm -hmm. it's just at every turn at every turn it's it felt like a lot like Batman Begins where it had descended into this camp the franchise had descended into this campiness everything That's was true. just too easy and they yeah. decided okay let's let's just strip it all away let's bring it back to basics and let's just keep it at every stage keep it more realistic than it was before. And that goes towards the, um, the conversations as well. Like a lot of the banter between him and uh, Ava Green, Vespa. gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful actress. But Vespa. not so gorgeous that she's like a Bond girl. You, you, she's accessible. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You don't hate she's her. Not like the other remote. two women, yeah, right. The other two remote. women in the movie were Bond girls. They were hardly wearing anything, they had, you know, boobs everywhere and very glossy. But with Vesper, I'm sorry to, to cut you off in the no, thought no. here, but with Vesper, they let you see her without makeup on when she's like getting ready. They let you see that her freckles, they let you see that she's a real person, that she's brilliant. She's not just being glamorous. And, and yet you believe that she's as smart as Bond. Yeah. You totally believe it. Whereas a lot of the other really beautiful women in a lot of these movies... Denise Richards is a nuclear oh physicist. Oh my god, I know. <laughs> yeah, sure she is. Um, yeah. Ava what? Green's a great actress. She Daniel Craig is a great actor. Wonderful. And together they work really well. Yes. I mean, you believe, you believe their banter. You believe the flirting. It's, it's actually the first time... I don't know ever that I've actually been sold on a Bond romance. Like, yeah, totally. wow, this this chick, you know, you can see why he would why totally he would go for her. For you can see why she, she would go for him. Yes, you know, absolutely. They they totally sold it. My hats off to the screenwriters. The the dialogue was excellent. The plot. Um, there there are some yeah, issues the with the, the plot, thing I didn't but really like everything else was great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, it wasn't. The plot's unusual. It's not, it's not that it was bad. For me, it wasn't bad. It was just 
kind of not what you expect. And in a way, that's kind of good, maybe. You know, because in a normal plot, you'd expect this big arc. You'd expect everything to lead up to this crescendo of action, and then there's a neat little bow to tie it off. Whereas with this one, the big climactic scenes in the casino where he, he actually faces down the villain and everything, that's not the end of the movie, you know? And the movie keeps going, and it's going in a way that's not making you bored, you know? It's just, I was just so waiting for that other, other shoe to drop. Yeah, I'm like, what is going on? I, I, there's a little movie left, but not really enough for, for, for anything really big to happen, but something's going to happen. And then you're like, oh my God, what? How did this happen? And the, But then they just like wrap it all up in this few scenes of dialogue and... We had to watch it a second time just to figure out what it all meant. Yeah, watching it a second time. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, we didn't watch it a second time. If if we just the last chose, if we had chosen to watch it a second time, there are ways that we could have watched it a second time without actually traveling to the theater. Right. If Remember, if we'd chosen to do that, <laughs> which we would never do. But <clears throat> yeah, we'll which I don't advocate, by the way. <laughs> I mean, we did go to the Westfield here in San Francisco. Awesome we new theater. We paid the money. We bought the popcorn. We yeah, we bought the Coke. We bought the gummy bears. Yeah. We definitely put in our money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you needed to see those last last fifteen minutes twice. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it definitely, um, definitely pay attention while you're watching. Yeah. There's a lot of little things that uh, you're not used to having to pay that much attention. You're used to them, the screen, the, the filmmaking being more obvious. And this one, you know, the plot's pretty tight. It moves along pretty well. They show you what they need to show you, but you do need to kind of you need to pay keep it straight. To the subtleties. Yeah. Yeah. I, we, I really missed a, a point that I wish I could have, like, if I just had a little clue. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that's great. That's fine. They don't. I don't need it all laid out on a silver platter. I was happy. So keeping it real, uh, Bond still has the Aston Martin. Yes. And oh, yet, when it rolled, oh, oh. It was crying. And oh. yet it's not Q Q's Aston Martin. It's not an Aston Martin with rocket launches. You know, <laughs> it's it's none of that. It's a very beautiful car. Um, and then uh, we we just saw actually. On ITV4, um, the real James Bond, it's, or making James Bond real, something like that. It was a documentary about the making of Casino Royale, available on a little service we like to call BitTorrent from the UK. Which we are going to talk about in an upcoming episode. Right. We'll talk about that. So if, if you have the means, I highly recommend it. Bit but it rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about the, the car crash scene. They, they ran through that scene several times with a BMW, you know, flying down that road and they had a little ramp and they flipped the BMW over so that it would tumble and they were like, okay, let's bring in the Aston Martin, let's get it done. So they try it, okay, it doesn't flip. It kind of spins out, stays upright, all right, we need a bigger ramp. So they, they ramp it up a bit more. All right, barreling down the road again, boom, over the ramp. It kind of breaks the fender and stuff and everything. The car doesn't flip. <laughs> the Aston Martin doesn't flip over. These, these are professional stuntmen trying to flip a car moving 70 miles an hour down a windy road and the thing won't flip. So they get an air cannon to make it flip. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it reminded me of Mythbusters. Yeah. It's a great TV show, by oh. the way. But uh, yeah, these, these guys trying to make this thing happen. But. <laughs> Yeah, it's all about the making of the stunts, and it's a great documentary. It's all about um, how they, again, at every turn, they're trying to keep it as real as possible. Use no, you know, CG other than to like paint out the safety wires that people are wearing from time to time. But um, they wanted it all to be as real as possible. Cool, and it looked like it. I mean, it was it was all very convincing. It was yeah. really good. It's a rocking movie. It's a rockin you will movie. have a good time. Definitely see it. Number 21. Number 21. Or 22 <laughs> if you say never say never again. Yeah, I'm not going to get into arguing that for sure. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us on A Blonde and a Geek. Thank you very much. I'm Christian D. I'm Cameron Lee. Signing off from San Francisco. We'll see you next time. Have a good night.
Welcome to A Blonde and a Geek, your weekly podcast of okay, all things... Okay, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to stop already because you have to stop saying it's weekly. We have not been able to hit a weekly schedule We yet. have ambitions of being we weekly. We have ambitions of being <coughs> weekly, but we're not... Okay. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. So we are a, um, a regular podcast. An inconsistent <laughs> a semi, podcast. Semi-regular podcast. Semi-regular. Uh, indeterminate link. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That I will. Uh, okay. Okay. 